Welcome to this first producer's notes of Digital Combat Simulator Black Shark. In this first note, we'll take a look at the basic startup engine procedure for the uh, K-50 Black Shark, and then in later notes, we'll take a close look at other systems such as the uh, defensive systems, the data link, uh, the Abrus movie map, the INS navigation, uh, the weapon systems, flight dynamics, mission editor, and so on. But today we'll take a look primarily at the uh, startup. Um, as you can see, we are in a completely six degree of freedom uh, cockpit. So we can move in and we can move out, move side to side, we can roll, we can move up and we can move down. And so we can pretty much look at anywhere we want within the cockpit. Now, at any point, we can go ahead and enable a actual pilot in the cockpit as well. But given that parts of the body uh, block access to some controls, uh, for the starter procedure, we'll go ahead and keep him off. With that done, we'll go ahead and we'll get the helicopter started. So the uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn on the uh, AC and DC external power. And as you may notice that when we hover the mouse over a function, you will get an English tooltip uh, to understand exactly what that is. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and turn on the forward and rear fuel pumps. We'll enable the uh, fuel gauge. We'll test the fuel gauge. Looks good. And we'll enable the uh, auxiliary power unit uh, fuel shaft valve. And we'll turn on the uh, collision beacon. We'll turn on the standby attitude indicator power, and that will start to spin up that gyro. And back on the back wall, we'll go ahead and get the gyro spun up for the inertial navigation unit. So if we go outside, you can go ahead and we'll see that uh, beacon underneath the, uh, the helicopter flashing away. Uh, back in the cockpit, let's go ahead and get the uh, APU started. So, the uh, switch right here is your APU and engine selector switch. When it's pointed to the left, it indicates that the APU is selected, which it is. So, we'll go ahead and we'll hit the starter switch here. Moving back, this is our APU gauge, and we'll start to see it spin up. Uh, power has been engaged, and when this light comes on, it indicates that we have the power necessary to uh, start cranking the engines, which we have now. So back to the uh, engine panel. We'll go ahead and we'll enable the uh, fuel shuttle valves for left and right engines. And we'll enable the electronic governors for the engines as well. And then back to the uh, engine select switch, we'll place it down in the bottom left hand corner, which is for the left engine. We'll disable the rotor brake and we'll start the left engine. Now going over here to the uh, engine RPM gauge, which left engine get to about 1800 RPM, and then we'll bring up the left uh, cutoff valve. And that'll allow uh, fuel to flow directly to the engine now. And what we're going to be doing is waiting for the uh, needle to get to about 7000 RPM. Uh, and then we'll, after that, we'll go ahead and get the right engine going. Uh, whilst doing that, we can go ahead and touch the uh, test, the engine temperature exhaust gauges, uh, the low end and the high end, and that all looks fine. Okay, so we're about uh, 7,000 RPM, so we'll get the right engine going now. So we'll place the uh, engine select switch in the uh, lower right, and click the engine start and we'll wait for the uh, other needle to get to about 1800 RPM and then we'll open up the engine shutoff valve and again, like the uh, left engine, we'll wait for that to get to about 7000 RPM while that's going we can go ahead and test the uh, uh, lamp indicators uh, those are all looking good Uh, over here is your uh, fire suppression panel. 
for the, uh, the left engine, the APU, the right engine, and the ventilator system. So if you have a fire detecting any of these, the uh, light bank here will come on. You press the switch and that will suppress that fire.